In our last lesson, we considered how the concept of a bit is changing our world in many different ways. In this lesson, we consider how a sequence of bits can form a stream of, of information that can represent all sorts of different kinds of things, from videos to, to music and pictures. So as an example, we can represent sound and songs on an MP3 file, roughly three and a half minutes, and we could use over 52 million bits to represent a song. Likewise, if we're thinking about a higher capacity and storing a movie on Blu-ray DVD, we may have several hundred billion bits used to represent that movie. So just this fundamental kind of atomic concept of a bit, when we represent that in a long sequence, can be used to repre uh, represent information in many different ways. So one thing we should ask our students to understand is how this concept of a bit is actually manifest in terms of the media in which it's stored. So decades ago with punch cards, physical holes were pressed into paper and a reader would r walk over those cards and understand whether or not there was a mark or not and, and consider that as a one or a zero. In our computers with all the billions of electrical signals floating through, that's also used to represent information by the charges that are considered in those uh, signals. And then in magnetic media, from hard drives to floppy disks, whether there's a positive or negative charge can also represent whether we have a bit of a zero or a one. And then with laser technology with CDs and DVDs, if a laser can burn a pit in the substrate of the CD or DVD, we can represent a zero or a one whether or not the value being read is flat or there's a bump there. If we can be seen at the microscopic level of the figure in the bottom right. So students should understand that the term bit is actually an acronym for binary digit. So binary digit is just a zero or a one. And if we can string several of these together, typically eight of these, we have a binary term. So a byte is just a representation typically of eight bits that can be used to represent a single character. And there's been some discussion that uh, the concept of a nibble is just half a byte or four bits. But you can then explain to the students the common terms that they've heard in many different contexts, such as kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and so on. Uh, and those are just powers of two in terms of the number of bytes that are represented. So there's several hands-on activities that we can do to allow our students to understand the concept of binary numbers and how they work. So the lead-in that I often do with my class in summer camps and even in my, my college class is to ask students in the class if anyone has celebrated a birthday recently. So in the class we find out their age and then I'll ask the student if they could represent that age with their hands. So for example a student that is 18 may flash uh, two hands up for 10 and then you know five and a three for 18. And I then will tell them that we can represent uh, from zero to 31 on a single hand with just five fingers. So we then proceed to, to show them through our hands what can be done. There's a video here on this slide that's very well done in terms of um, showing this concept. And that particular author actually num has numbered his fingers, one, two, four, eight, and 16 based on the powers of two. And that video, he'll show his fingers and you can count that way. But if we take our, our fingers from um, representing from the, the, the thumb being one, two, four, eight, and 16, we can then represent all the numbers from zero with all fingers down to 31, all fingers up. And we can ask the students to help us count in class together. So number one would be just my thumb up, the number two would be my index finger, and then the number three would be number two plus one. Um, we could pick some other numbers, for example, eight would be my ring finger, nine would be my ring finger and my thumb. We do all kind of variations of that from zero to 31. So we can ask a, a follow-up question even to the class in terms of what kinds of values could we represent if we used two hands. So instead of just five fingers, if we had two hands and ten fingers, what kind uh, of numbers or what range of numbers we then represent. So in terms of thinking about binary numbers, consider what we learned back in elementary school and how the decimal number system works. So we were taught that there are powers of 10, 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. And if we consider a number such as 1,234, what this really means is if I map up the number 1 in the thousands place, the 2 in the hundreds place, the 3 in the tens place, and the 4 in the ones place, I can then multiply down, as shown in this figure, and then sum across and represent that number as 1,000 plus 200 plus 30 plus 4. So this is a base 10 numbering system for decimal numbers with the value 0 through 9. 
In a binary number system, we have two values, 0 and 1, but we can use this exact same process to represent numbers. So in this case, I have powers of 2. So instead of powers of 10, I would write 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on across the top of the screen or scratch paper, or whatever you'd be using. And then if I had a particular bit pattern, for example, this bit pattern here on the screen would be 1010. And the subscript 2 represents a binary number, and the subscript 10 represents a decimal number. So the bit pattern 1010 in binary is equal to the decimal number 10. So we could compute this by lining up those powers of 2, as I just mentioned, and then aligning the bit pattern underneath it. And then 8 times 1 is 8, 4 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 0 is 0. So 8 plus 2 would be 10. So the same process we used on a previous slide with decimal numbers we can use with binary numbers. We also need to consider how to go in the reverse direction. Given a decimal number, how do we find its binary equivalent? So there's a multi-step process that we can describe that would do that for us. And it's very similar to the previous conversion to, from decimal to binary, where we will first draw at the very top of our scratch paper or whatever the list of the powers of 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, as you can see here. And then what we do, for example, if we're trying to convert to number 13 decimal to binary, we start at the most significant or highest powered bit, which in this case would be 16. And then we work from 16 down to 1, from left to right. And then what we do is compare the current bit to the current decimal value that we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for 13, and the, the, the highest powered bit would be 16. So if the highest powered bit, current bit we're looking at, is greater than a decimal number, we just place a zero underneath that power and then move to the right on down to the next power. However, if the current the binary bit is less than or equal to the decimal number, what we do is we place a one under that uh, binary number and then we subtract the current decimal number from the value of that binary number. So this may be much more understandable if we look at this example of converting the number 3. So to convert to number 3, I start again with the highest power, in this case 16, and I compare 16 to 13. Well, in this case, 16 is greater than 13, so what I do is place a 0 there on the 16th power, and then I move down to 8. So and then I look at 8 and compare it to 13. Well, now 8 is less than 13, so what I do is place a 1 under the 8, and I subtract 8 from 13 to get 5. So I move then down to the power of 4 and compare the new number 5. So 5 compared to 4, well, 4 is obviously less than, so I place a 1 underneath a 4, and then subtract 4 from 5 to get 1. So the new decimal number that I'm trying to solve is 1, and I just left the power 4. And so in this case, I compare 2 to 1. 2 is greater, so I place a 0 underneath a 2. And then 1 is less than or equal to 1, so I place a 1 underneath the 1. So the resulting bit pattern that I have is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So adding that up, it would be 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So that would represent the decimal number 13 by the bit pattern 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. The CS Unplugged activities from Tim Bell of New Zealand is an exciting way to introduce your students to concepts of computing without even using a computer, hence the term unplugged. So I've used these activities in my college class, even in K through 5 classes. So the core concepts are there in a very easy to understand way across all age groups. So in the particular example with binary numbers, if you, you can see the uh, website here that's referenced to CS Unplugged, there's an example called counting the dots. So in counting the dots, what I do is call up several members from the class to the front and I give them pieces of laminated paper that looks like this. So if I have five or six students, they each have one of these representing the powers of two from one to 16 or one to 32. And we ask them all to turn their bits off. So a bit being turned off is just showing the black side. And then we would ask um, the, the team overall to start to count from one to say 16. So the one bit would be flipping every other um, number and, and we can watch the students then try to understand among themselves how to count. So it, once the bit's turned on, that would, in this case, would represent 16, and then when, when it's off, and then the students will be going back and forth. So we can they also have the class suggest numbers to the students, and the team can then huddle around up front and try to figure out the, the appropriate bit pattern. So this is an exciting way to get the students more engaged kinesthetically and up and out of their, their seats. So what we can do after the unplugged activities 
and considering how to do the conversions from binary to decimal and decimal to binary is then look uh, at other number systems. So we have other number systems such as octal numbers, hexadecimal numbers that we could ask the students to think about. For example, a hexadecimal number has 16 different values. So from 0 to 15, but 15 is represented with numbers. So 10 would be the letter A and 15 would be the letter F. So the students can be asked, uh, given them some, some numbers, if, if as a group, if they can help figure out how to convert the hexadecimal numbers to decimal and vice versa. So we ask other numbering systems to be involved and, and see if the students can make a conversion between all of these. Then aqua numbers are base eight, and you can use the same process shown earlier, how we converted decimal numbers by putting the powers of 10 across the row and adding them up after we've multiplied, or also the same way with decimal numbers. That system will work for any number system. So the students can have that kind of step process in their mind and adjust it based on the powers of the particular numbering system that they'd like to convert to. So this ends the lesson on binary numbers and how binary numbers can be converted from one to another and the different types of bits and bytes and, and the way that those sequences are, are discussed in terms of the various um, technologies that the students may encounter. The next lesson will go much deeper into some specific examples of how bits can be used to represent images and text.